key thing is to not get overwhelmed by the hype. Uh, in the sense that there's a lot of people pushing solutions out there and there is a perception that it solves every problem. Um, but we all sort of know that anything that solves every problem probably solves none. The only other thing I would say is really you want to try and talk to as many people as you can. Right? So you want to try and find people who've applied these solutions in other areas and understand the kinds of things that they ran into, the problems, the things that were successful, and try and actually implement that on your own. I started off as a chemist. I did a chemistry undergraduate degree. And to me, it has always just been a process of understanding what is possible with these techniques, talking to others about it, and developing my skills. I'd say start by understanding what questions this can help you answer because then you can understand what things it will be useful for you to learn. And maybe it's just a question of learning a bit of the language to be able to collaborate with others across this. I mean, because to be honest, I couldn't carry out a wet lab chemistry experiment anymore. You wouldn't want me in there. So I hope I am useful to those people who are actually capable of doing things like that by doing things on the other side of the fence. If I was thinking about a student in this, I would be saying, don't go and get trained without getting training across these technologies but it does mean you should be exposed to the ideas of how things might be or could be roboticized, how computers might influence your work, how programming could be really useful for all of this. Take programming classes, take them early so that it feels natural to you. All of my students, some of them come with programming experience and that's very helpful for them. The other ones take them in university um, and that's great too. And because they sit in my group, which is very much sort of, if you're not programming, you're not sort of part of, of what we do really well. Uh, Jupyter Notebooks, APIs, all that stuff. You sort of really want to be plugged in. I think once you leave that kind of environment, you feel like you, you're on top of it and you, you have something to offer the rest of the world in terms of bringing that knowledge. My advice for anyone embarking on training in chemical synthesis is to be aware of the new technologies that are just around the corner, that are coming on stream in data handling, statistical programming, machine learning. Because any chemist who is aware uh, and has some experience of this will be in very high demand in the future. My advice to any chemist wanting to get into digital technologies for chemistry would be to learn to do a little bit of programming, understand how to build a database, not be afraid of getting into the mathematics and getting help for generating mathematical relationships, because that can be done using software rather than having to be a degree level mathematician. And then learning to talk to roboticists and understand what is doable. And the final thing would be to find problems that will benefit from, from using digital technologies. My own experience is the benefits kick in several years after you start the endeavor. You know. So um, but to give one specific example, my student Benjamin Berger, who, who built our first autonomous mobile robot. So it took him two and a half years to build the robot. And he's two and a half years into his PhD and he literally hasn't really run any chemistry experiments, which is alarming for a chemistry PhD. But once the thing is set up, he manages to do 700 experiments in the first week almost that he runs the system. And that's more experiments than you might run in a PhD. So the payoff is, is long term. Yeah, so that's my main advice, patience. And also have good collaborators because it's very difficult to do this stuff entirely by yourself. I, I think it's important to have the right skill sets and we have very good collaborators. We've had good learning from looking outside of our own organisation and talking to people about how they use digital. But I would always suggest that you think about a very bespoke programme to begin with so that you can understand quickly what the limitations might be but what the potential is. And then I think you can take people with you because the biggest piece I think in digital is going to be the culture change for practising scientists and data scientists. And I think we have to make sure when we're doing any of these uh, programmes and processes that we make them accessible to scientists and data scientists so that they understand the direction of travel and can actually enable that direction of travel rather than being confused or, or feeling limited by it. I guess there's a few pieces of advice I'd give to people who do want to use data and AI um, in their work. Actually, regardless of the field, I think one piece of advice is to not easily be put off. Um, there are definitely advantages to using more data science techniques, using more artificial intelligence techniques. You have to be very focused on what it is you're trying to achieve. Exploratory science is good, but with a definite endpoint in mind, you've got to always remember 
What's your raison d'etre? What are you really trying to do? So focus on real problems that matter, but don't expect every pilot to succeed either. This is a new area. There'll always be some per perspiration ahead of the inspiration.